I'm still going to have a good week. Long as the Eagles lose, I'm still going to have a good week. Everybody loses, I'm still having a good week. Because we still in it by one game. God damn it. Jason fucking Garrett. Seriously? Is that what y'all went through for 10 years? Is that what y'all went through for 10 years? Exactly. But we actually had a good team. What? Oh, now, yes. you, now you want to see, see the shit now. When he with y'all. When we were dealing with it all this damn time. How do you fucking call he plays? He you how to do it. He's I don't know. I don't get this. No, but Jason Garrett. Seriously, Jason Garrett. How do you fucking call plays? Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes and I made a big, big mistake. Oh my God, a huge, huge mistake. I left Joe Boo at the Red Brick House. He's there taking care of it and everything else. I, I feel like an idiot. So Joe Boo's not here, but Joe Bear is handling it over here. And as always, I wanna say thank you all for watching commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Last night, the Philadelphia Eagles literally opened the door for San Francisco and the Dallas Cowboys. And the things, th this is what's kind of comical to me. It's comical to me because we say things as YouTubers, and, of course, we get dismissed because we're in our mama's basement. We don't know shit. When we told people that Kellen Moore was not the reason that the Dallas Cowboys were the highest-scoring offense in football, it wasn't because of Kellen Moore. We told you he's a liability. And now the Chargers have found out that guy is ass-ass, that he sucks. I so remember back in January when Charger fans were like, oh, my God, now – Kellen Moore has a real quarterback. Oh, can, can you imagine the creativity? I remember there was a Charger fan that was talking about the creativity of Kellen Moore and how excited they were. But we told you, we told you they were not him. It was not him. We told you. Y'all don't want to listen because we in our mama's basement. We've been saying, or I've been saying, that the Eagles' defense are frauds. They have a great front, but their linebacking core sucks. Their secondary, overrated. And literally... Disrespected yet? Does this defense have any heart? That's no. They suck. Versatile. I've been telling you all season, they Philly. They've shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> Don't you hear me, Jordan Davis, <laughs> Kayla Carter, Slight... They shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> they have shit on you. Don't don't you hear me, Jordan uh. Davis, Kayla Carter, Sly? They shit on you. Kill them. Oh my goodness. Did he say they, they cock it on them? I hate the style of defense. I they did get shit on. But we've been saying this because here just the thing. I, 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 before we go crazy, now I want you to understand something. They put the 40 burger on them. And you look, oh my God, look what San Francisco did. They destroyed that defense. But I'm here to tell you that that defense has been getting destroyed all season. Understand that the left hand up, who are we, the stinky commanders, scored 31 on that same defense. Let me say that again scored 31 on that same defense. And it wasn't garbage time because the commanders were leading them the first game. The Eagles had to come back to tie it up. And Ron Rivera has no cojones to try and go for two to try and win the game. And even the second time they played them, had Scary Terry not been so scary and dropping a fourth down catch, 
they get beat by the commanders with the left hand up that stink. That defense gave up three TD passes to Mac Jones. They have been living on Jalen Hurts being able to pull their ass out. And when you have to go to those games every single time, you're not a good team. Defense is not. That's the Achilles heel. Now, shout out to him for being 10-2. and two, But now, the formula's out. And also, we as Cowboy fans have to look at it. We all have to recognize right now, San Francisco is the best team. At the moment, the San Francisco 49 But here's the thing about the NFL that's so cray-cray. Shit changes quickly. Shit changes so quickly. Last night, Kansas City loses to the Green Bay Packers, a team that was desperate for a win. How crazy is it that when we're sitting here looking at the beginning of the season, watching the early games, and we're seeing the Minnesota Vikings look like ass? Although, Kirk Cousins did have 28 points on that same defense, mind you, with all of his offensive line sitting out. And had Justin Jefferson not fumbled the ball before the half, out of bounds, out of the end zone, they would have lost to the Minnesota Vikings. But as we sit here this morning, it's sad because the Cowboys have tied with San Francisco as the second best record in the NFC. But unless they can overtake the Eagles, they're the fifth seed. The other seeds right now, the wild cards, the Green Bay Packers, at six and six, and the Minnesota Vikings at six and six. That's how crazy the season is. Both of those teams were awful to start the season. People were saying, man, damn, they messed up. Jordan Love? Jordan Love last night played better than Pat Mahomes. Yes, I said it. Yes, I said it. Now, they did kind of get robbed there because it was definitely pass interference on Jason Kelsey. But it is what it is. In the end, they lost. And you look at it from where people will still say that Pat Mahomes is the MVP. I'm sorry. That offense is not scoring like they used to. That offense, that defense has been saving their ass because they're one of the best scoring defenses in football. It's not Pat Mahomes' in his arm. It's not to say that Pat Mahomes isn't the best quarterback in football. So listen to the message. But what the statistics say and the record says this year, it's not Pat Mahomes. Right now, it's Dak Prescott and Brock Purdy. Jalen Hurts, when they lost that game, they lost a lot. They lost their mystique. Jalen Hurts lost that number one position for MVP. And maybe, just maybe, they lose Shaq Leonard. We're supposed to hear that today. Supposed to get a decision. So we are on the Shaq watch right now. And San Francisco now has an inside track of getting the number one seed. And there's a chink in the armor of the Eagles where if we take care of business, if we take care of business, maybe we can overtake them. We're still going to need some other help. And that's where I look to my buddy, Rashid. I'm going to enjoy this morning, but then we're going to get down to work because this week may be the biggest game in a long time for the Dallas Cowboys. And the Dallas Cowboys are healthy and they're rested and hopefully they will be ready to go. And if... If the Cowboys can go in and beat the Eagles down, you got to look and say that Dak Prescott is definitely a guy and definitely an MVP candidate. Now, what's going to happen here, because I, I know my buddy Jason, Jason who, Jason is a San Francisco 49er fan, okay? He's been emailing me and and and. and just, you know, kind of bitch slapping me around and telling me I'm stupid and things like that. And when I was talking about how CeeDee Lamb had overtaken A.J. Brown, and he said, why would you poke the bear? 
I said, you don't understand social media because <laughs> it doesn't matter if they like you or hate you. The fact is that they're watching you. And there's nothing better than needling the eagles. Needle them, piss them off. And there's nothing even better when you say something and it's true that they hate. He took it that I was Skip Bayless for some, some odd reason. I said, no. I said, the things I say on this channel, I believe in. I am a diehard Dallas Cowboy fan. I live and breathe. There is Dallas Cowboys literally here. I was awake in the middle of the night editing a video and stuff on for, for my other channel where I'm sanding the floors and I'm reading everything about the Cowboys and getting my thoughts together because I literally, every single day of my life, I'm obsessed with the Dallas Cowboys in the news, even in the off season, I literally live and breathe. And unfortunately or fortunately, I'm too old to change. I will die a Dallas Cowboy fan. Just will. That and I got so much Dallas Cowboy stuff, I couldn't start over. I just couldn't. You just couldn't. I mean, you're looking up here at Tom Landry autograph footballs and, you know, the, the uh, Dallas Cowboys doomsday defense football gods. And, yeah, it, I can't change. I can't change. But if my Cowboys can go in there and destroy the Eagles. And here's the thing. San Francisco put the formula out. You got Jalen Carter crying. There's no crying in football, Jalen. There's no crying in football. You got to be a bully. And we have to become just like San Francisco. That's how you beat a bully. You fight fire with fire. Hats off to San Francisco because they were that team. They bitch slapped them. They took care of business. Brock Purdy made the plays when he needed to. They destroyed the Eagles. They may have broken the Eagles. Now it's our time to finish him. Yeah. So I want to go to, now again, this is one of those pirated sites that got get up this morning because I wasn't up in time to actually see it myself. But I want to hear what they have to say about the reaction of Brock Purdy and the San Francisco 49ers and what they did. I guess it's up to y'all to kind of interpret it, but I, I had full confidence that we would, we would have this type of game from, from, the, from the jump. You know, um, we got a quarterback, so it made it a lot easier this time. I mean, we're not good enough right now. I think that, obviously, disappointed in the way we performed and, um, you know, didn't get it done today. I still have the utmost confidence with everybody in this locker room on both sides of the ball. Um, this game doesn't do anything to sway that. Oh, by the way, they still have the best record in the NFL. But, Rex, the question is this. Are the 49ers now definitively the best team in the NFL? Absolutely. It's not even close. Not even close. And Greeny, I think in today's game, all right, today's game, you, you want to look at explosives, all right? And can you create them on offense and can you prevent them on defense? They're 49, plus 49 <laughs> against their opponent. Mm. Nobody in huh. the league is close to that. Mm -hmm. Nobody's close. So they play phenomenal on offense and they're phenomenal on defense. This is a team that has no weaknesses. And so to me, it's not close. And Nick, you knew they were ready for business oh, when? Yeah. I mean, the 49ers talked trash all week leading up to the game. Then they wore all black into the They stadium, came in. And then they proceeded to whoop the Eagles from the beginning to the end of that game. It was an intense game, and you're right. They hate each other, but it felt like the 49ers hated just a little harder than the Eagles. Well, because last year, right? Yeah, because of last year. And I think the biggest issue for the 49ers, excuse me, for the Eagles, is not just that they are – Probably the Eagles are probably more talented, but the middle of the field on the defense, they were getting attacked. Their linebackers and safeties were in a bind. The next time they play, they're going to have to put Bradbury and Slay on the island and do something to address the, the and protect their linebackers and safeties. I, I would push back that Philly's more talented. I, I think oh, San Francisco, uh, this is why I felt Not on defense. No, that's what I was saying. San Francisco's more talented. Okay, yeah, yeah, San Francisco's yeah, the most talented roster in football, and they're the best coached team in football. And we saw that last night. I mean, if you just want to look at, they got into one formation all game long, it felt like. Four by one, four strong. 
and just attacked Philadelphia. I thought Philadelphia adjusted very poorly. Four strong, what does that mean? Four guys at the bottom of the screen on one side of the football, okay, to the the offense's right. Philadelphia doesn't adjust to it. Now everyone's flowing towards that four strong. Debo's just running a shallow cross on third and one. They got three guys covering Juwan Jennings. Nobody (laughs) covering Debo Samuel. Third and one, easy completion. Again, four strong, meaning the back to the left of the quarterback, three guys up top. Watch George Kittle on this play. George Kittle. So now we motion. Does anybody adjust on the defense? Not really. Mm -mm. Here comes Kittle again. Does anybody adjust on the defense? The defense sucks. How many guys are covering nobody up top? (laughs) And then Kittle's going to run essentially a little bit of a check down. There's no one within 15 yards of him. So the, the fact that they got into that formation and consistently attacked Philadelphia, to your guys' point, the middle of the field, it was weird to watch how San Francisco's strengths, which are formations, personnel, mm-hmm. motions, Philadelphia struggled with so much. That's the identity of who San Francisco is. That tape was so good. Rex, what does it mean? Why weren't the Eagles more <laughs> Means they suck. in position, if you will, on those plays? This is an extension of what's happened all season. To the Eagles. To the Eagles. This defense, I mean, they they're suck. awful on defense. And here's the thing. I'm watching them like, oh, they're in cover two. Oh, they're in cover four. They're... They do nothing to challenge the offense. Meaning you can see Me- that from your couch. Absolutely. I mean, for the most part, if the safety's ever in the picture, I can see the coverage. Right. And so, to me, this is such a vanilla, uh, such a vanilla defense. And I've said all the whole season I've waited for this team. I go, this is not the same team. The record's the same, but they're not near as good as they right, were last year. Can I ask you a question year. on that? So, I, I would be very surprised Ooh. if San Francisco's not in the Super Bowl. Yeah. I, honestly. Sure. The offense does that a little bit to the defense, though, right? Because I remember, because Rex, I remember watching Philadelphia play against Miami a couple weeks ago, which is the same scheme, right? And they played relatively vanilla defense in that game because you kind of have to versus right. that that style of offense. Is it more like the the benefit to San no, Francisco, I, or is it is it a Philly issue? It's a Philly issue, like. I, uh, San Fran's going to challenge everybody. Yes. That this system is awesome. You and can, you're right. They're well coached. You can but get, the a, defense you can is get a away with Philly. vanilla zone coverages when your defensive line is dominating up front. Okay. And their defensive line is not dominating up front. They're going to put you in a bind, especially. That's why you go to four by one. It's because mm-hmm. you're seeing zone. Yeah. yeah. Four by, there's no zone built to cover four by one. Then you. You adjusted that by going to man coverage, and they got better guys than you. Yeah, they can't, you can't go man coverage against those guys. Now, can I just say one other thing? The Eagles have now lost, uh, looks it up, two games right. this entire season. In the last 13 days, they beat Kansas City on the road. They beat Buffalo in a tough game. And then yesterday, maybe they ran out of gas. Is the margin between these two teams really as stark as it looked in the second half last night? Absolutely not. Like, they're not 42 to 19, but they are still better. And I think the rest disadvantage does hurt them a little bit, but I still think the 49ers are better. <laughs> Here, here's why, like, we have to understand, San Francisco, the context, again, in the conversation matters. We're not talking about Philly good. We're talking about Philly, can you go back and win the Super Bowl? San Francisco is going to attack the middle of the field. That's where they're weakest. We know that. that. We saw that last mm-hmm. night, eight completions for, like, a buck fifty. Mm-hmm. Two, I honestly believe this. They cannot cover San Francisco. They don't have enough people they don't. to cover San Francisco. They can't Francisco. cover Dallas. I just watched that game last night. Dom and Rex know it better than me. San Francisco is going to attack number 39 for Philadelphia. Third and five, switch. Juwan Jennings is wearing them out. Multiple examples of, watch, this is all in the second half, guys. It was very clear Kyle Shanahan said, we're going to go after number 39 because our number three receiver is better than their number three and or four corner. That's another third down conversion. Here's another third down. This is all the same matchups. It's Jennings versus 39. And I think Kyle Shanahan. We're going to leave it right there with the Eagles and things. It's safe to say that their Eagles defense is their Achilles heel, something we've been saying all season. And let me say, I appreciate all of you great people watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. We're going to have some fun today, but we need to get serious. I've got something in here that is clicking. I apologize on that. Um I have to reboot the computer. I got some crazy stuff happening with it, but we'll get it figured out. Let's end it with this. Disrespected yet? Does this defense have any heart? No, they suck. I've been telling you all season, Philly. Shit on you. They've shit on you. (laughs) Don't you hear me, Jordan? (sighs) Kayla Carter, Slight. They shit on you. They've shit on you. (laughs) They have shit on you. Don't. 
Don't you hear me, Jordan Davis, <laughs> Jalen Carter? It's like they shit on you. Kill them. Oh my goodness.